In this video, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance, it's Myrtle's time to go on an adventure. <laughs> yes, it's time for the um, annual car show of a slightly sweary name, put on for the forum of a slightly sweary name. Uh, we're going to Devon and um, the fest of, um, yeah, um, rubbish cars is probably the best way to think about it. Uh, I haven't done any promo about the event because it is a closed event really. It is just for members of a certain forum and um, yeah, it doesn't seem fair to turn their event into um, a hubnut meeting. So we're not doing that. We're just going to drive there in Myrtle because she is the most powerful car I own. She's the only car I own with a five speed gearbox. She's, um, yeah, the most modern car I own at 20 years. Uh, Sometimes I do question where my life has gone quite so spectacularly wrong. But nonetheless, um, just to recap, this is um, the Deu Matiz I bought brand new in the August of 1999. And uh, yeah, uh, I sold her after 18 months. And last year I managed to find her again and I bought her back. And uh, yeah, she's looking like she could do with another polish. I had to buff her up when I first got her back. The paint was very flat. Um, but I didn't wax after I'd um, polished, so that's what you get. Also, the headlamps are starting to go a bit foggy again as well. Um, they were restored for not last year's MOT. Um, I think it might have been the MOT before, but they need doing again as well. But yeah, bring it on. Oh, just had to top the coolant up. Uh, it's a little worrying. You, you can see where someone used rad weld before to try and cure a leak. Uh, disgusting stuff. Clogs up everything. Probably explains why the heater matrix isn't very good. I could probably do with flushing out the cooling system again. Of course that was all because there was a, a leak here rather given away by the fact everything's been sprayed orange. Um, there was a, a leaky hose down the back of the engine uh, which I've had replaced. Still got various oil leaks going on so the exhaust gets a bit stinky from time to time. Um, Oh, someone said there was a restrictor in the air filter on these. So maybe we should have a look at that. Because um, when the lid wasn't fitted properly, she sounded awesome and definitely went better. And then I refitted the lid properly and now she doesn't sound so good. So uh, you have to use both hands to get that undone. There's essential tasks to do before going on a long journey go. This probably isn't up there. But I see what they mean. Look, um, nice big chunky pipe there. But in the middle, it's it's tiny. Um, I'm sure that was there for a reason. Probably for emissions reasons, maybe. I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm going to see if I can get that out. Yes, it literally just pulls out. Um, so whether they've done that for noise, for emissions, I don't know. I mean, there must be an interesting Venturi effect, squeezing it through a restrictor like that. But um, we'll put it back in, see if it makes any difference at all. Um, in theory, being a fuel-injected car, if it senses more air, it should be able to apply more fuel as well. This is going to be fun. Here we go then. So far so normal, despite the power-boosting mods. Oh yeah, I feel just like Mighty Car Mods now. Right, a seatbelt might be a good idea. Make sure it doesn't interfere with the microphone. Uh, so the mileage readout at the moment, 91114. So remember that, and we'll see how many miles we cover on this trip. Uh, I think we're going to be getting on for 600. Um, maybe not quite that many, we, we'll see. Um, should be a fun weekend. I'm going to revisit the Hyundai Stella. Um, the one with a V8 engine. Uh, might do a second video on that because um, first time round I didn't show you under the bonnet. Idiot. Uh, that was two years ago, I think. So we'll, we'll do that. But um, maybe she sounds a little more gur. We shall set off and see how we go. First stop, uh, we've got to go down to Barnstable. Right, this is far from scientific because it's not flat at all, but. Oh, bend. <laughs> so 
signs are meant. Oh, crest. That's, um, yeah, exciting times. I'm not sure it's any quicker at all, but um, she definitely sounds meatier. She's definitely pulling much better at the top end. You know, uh, maximum revs is when she's really sucking the air in. And, um, yeah, she, she used to felt like she was just flattening out a bit, and um, now she doesn't. Crest. So, yeah, I think I'm going to rate the um, Deumitis airbox restrictor removal as a success. Um, I, it doesn't seem to have reduced the torque, because, I mean, there wasn't any to start with. So, um, yeah, we shall say that's good times. Anyway, still a long way to go. Um, we're getting close to the border with Powys, but we're still going to get all the way to Devon, which means going across the Seven Bridge, which is now free both ways. Excellent. What a lovely day. Tomorrow we're camping. Tomorrow is not going to be a lovely day. This car's hilarious. Certainly is quite impressive here in the Brecon Beacons. Okay, there must be a Figaro meet going on somewhere because I've now seen four Figaros, two of them very close together. Three of them have been grey so far, only one in the Topaz. Um, I only did them in four colours originally. Yeah, it's a fair bit of rain. We're on the M5 now in England. Uh, wishing people would put their lights on, it would make them a lot easier to see. It's really nice and sunny in Wales. Hail! Good three! Everyone slowed down, well not everyone, most people have slowed down to about 30 miles an hour because this is um, horrible. A great weekend to go camping! Oh, well now it's um, calmed down a bit. Um, we have reached Somerset. Uh, Somerset is where the National Microcar Rally is going to be in September. Um, but I don't think we'll come the motorway route in Tuck. Um, even if she can get on a bit more than she used to, it's probably not the best idea. We should carry on to Devon. We've covered about 140 miles so far. Um, all seems to be going well. Well, good morning and welcome to day two of this adventure. Uh, we are still on our way to the um, Slightly Sweary event of the Slightly Sweary Forum. Uh, I had an overnight stay in Biddeford with my parents and then this morning um, went to see them moving into their new, ho how, uh, new house even. Oh, I can't speak this morning. Uh, that's despite two cups of tea, that's slightly worrying times. But yeah, it's um, pouring down with rain. So, um, ideal for camping. Uh, thunderstorms rumoured this afternoon, uh, which should be um, exciting. Uh, thankfully, I, I think we've got um, a clubhouse to sit in if it pours down with rain. And to be honest, I'm not ruling out the possibility of setting up my bed in there if the weather does not improve substantially. But um, yeah, really looking forward to it. My friends are coming down from Glasgow. Um, the owner of the big yellow bus has decided not to bring it all the way from Glasgow to Devon. More's the pity. But there might still be some bus action this weekend, we'll see. Um, but yeah, generally just chilling out in the field with friends, really looking forward to it. But should be some um, test videos coming out of it, hopefully. 
and most importantly it's been a chance to give Myrtle a run out. Uh, she did 45 mpg on the way down here which is good. Slightly worried that moving the restrictor may be causing her to pink um, at times. Pinking is um, a sort of a rattling sound and it's a rattling sound because what's happening is the piston's coming up but ignition is happening before the piston gets to the top of its stroke. So um, yeah, there's a bit of an explosion as the piston is still coming up and that puts huge strain on everything and makes a bit of a rattling sound. And um, yeah, it's pretty much the piston rattling in the cylinder, not having a jolly time of it. And uh, if you ignore such things, then um, eventually you blow a hole in the piston. And most people consider that undesirable. Uh, I certainly do. So I'm not ruling out putting the restrictor back in. Because what could be causing that is if the restrictor is now allowing too much air through and perhaps the car can't compensate for that. Um, you know, there's a sensor on the air box, but that's before the air intake. So if there's not one on the throttle body, but it won't know there's too much air and um, yeah, it'll be running too lean, which is making it run too hot. Uh, so that's not a good thing. So um, I might be forced to put the restrictor back in, which is a shame because she sounds absolutely fantastic when I give her a bootful. Which I'm having to do quite a lot because we're in Devon. And um, yeah, I forget how bad this car is at keeping momentum. Uh, coming up the steep hills on the um, link road we're on at the moment between Biddeford and Tiverton. And uh, yeah, on the big hills, I'm having to drop to fourth just to keep her at 60. And even then it's a bit of a struggle. And I, I don't think that's because the restrictor is causing um, a loss of torque, although it is a possibility. Um, I think that's just because the Dayumit is in 0.8 litre form is not very powerful but uh, yeah there have been people on Twitter people who run rolling roads saying um, people are amazed when they fit an induction kit to a car and end up getting less power or less torque um, just because of the way the air is going into the engine because um, a wide open throttle what you want is minimum um, in intake length um, you want you want the air to get in as quickly and smoothly as possible but for torque you actually want um, the air to come in less turbulent a bit more balanced a longer intake runner is better for torque uh, which is why some race engines I think Mazda did this with one of their rotary race engines has an intake trumpet that is adjustable in length depending on what's going on um, engine wise so if you want torque the runner is quite long and when you get to maximum power the, sh the intake runner is short it's um, remarkable stuff really I really think what Myrtle needs is a turbocharger um, I love turbo triples they're hilarious uh, I've driven you know Daihatsu Shirad GTTI and Suzuki Cappuccino they're just bonkers and um, I think that's what Myrtle needs I can't promise Myrtle's ever going to get a turbocharger, but when I owned it the first time, I often dreamt of it, and I'm dreaming of it now. But um, for now, we'll have to make do with comedy intake noise. Well, here we are at slightly sweary event, um, doing repairs variously. Um, green blood being um, given to the um, DS because. Um, Hydraulic Citroens like a bit of green blood and uh, I'm trying to undo my bodgery on the Matiz. So I've refitted the restrictor, managed to slightly break it but that's fine because I'm worried she's pinking a bit under load because she's now getting too much air and it's not being compensated for. Um, then I managed to snap the toggles off the back of the air filter box so that's now um, gaffer taped in place. So generally I've been improving things not at all. Um, oh well, uh, let's have a look at the coolant. Yeah, that's dropped a fair bit, but it's still between min and max, so we'll say that's all right. What a lovely colour it isn't. Very icky. Uh, let's have a peek at the oil while we're here. Yeah, that looks like it's probably a bit low. We'll find a rag to re-wipe that and check it. 
So um, yeah, here we are at the event with a slightly sweary name for the forum with a slightly sweary name. Bit of a mix of cars going on. We've got a Citroen AX 1.1 Forte. That's the um, car that looks like a GT but isn't. Metal the Matiz. Um, my friend's um, Citroen DS next to an extremely characterful CX that another friend bought on eBay for not many pounds. Um, I don't know why it was so cheap. Um, but it is a turbo diesel and then we've got um, my friend Nick's um, Saab 900 convertible not a turbo but um, not a bad car nonetheless fourth gen prelude I used to own one of these uh, same spec I think two liter I automatic uh, quite nice cars uh, modern Jaguar belonging to another friend not sure who owns the X-Trail We've got um, a Volvo that has appeared in other videos, a Hyundai Stella. That should be the first Hyundai Stella of the weekend. Uh, it, yeah, gold, gold medal winning and uh, about to become a bed. Hence the cardboard for that nice transient sort of look. Uh, a Proton that has come all the way from the northeast of England. A uh, little Daihatsu Kure. Let's come all the way from Wales. Um, we've got um, a Vauxhall Corsa. I don't know if that's with us or not. Um, a Vol another Volvo Estate. 960 this time with a full fat 3 litre 24 valve. But behold the majesty of this Volvo 740 hearse. Complete with extra lights in the bumpers because the whole rear panel opens up. Uh, my friend Phil's uh, Mark 1 BX. Uh, on skinny little 145 tyres, that is a thing of beauty, and uh, being a Mark 1 BX, you get the more interesting dashboard um, with the rocker switches, so that one's um, for rear wiper I think, um, but that's not a switch on this one because it has no rear wiper, slideys for the um, uh, front wiper, and uh, a rocker on the other side for the indicators and rotating dials for the speedometer. Very, very interesting cars. Peugeot 306 Cabriolet, very pretty. Um, this um, Citroen XM has come all the way from that there, France. And um, we got a little Redant Robin with the uh, Mark II Fiesta front end. And um, yeah, the flimsiest seats known to man. Uh, mostly full of camping gear at the moment but I think he's actually going to camp elsewhere. We've got a Citroen ZX. There was a real shortage of ZXs at the Citroen Centenary last year. We've got a Rover 200 bubble over there. And um, there's my little tent. And there's my friend Sam's enormous monster tent. Yeah, that was not a great night's sleep. And um, now it's blowing a gale and um, all rainy again as well. That's, um, yeah, because it's now daytime. There's the, my mate's massive tent. Uh, I bet that wasn't blown around quite as much as this one was last night. Um, starting to feel that maybe this 20 year old Euro hike tent has reached the end of the line, but um, yeah, I'm just going to stay here. I'm not going out there for a moment. Variety is what this event is about. Uh, we've got a Toyota Estida, Estima Lucida Charm Pleasure Wagon with Joyful Canopy next to a BMW E28 M5. We've got a Hyundai Stella, not a V8 Stella. That's a Hyundai Stella Gold, a Proton 1.5 Automatic, Volvo 740, 940, sorry and um, yeah various others magnificent we are tramming excitements we have 
come to Seaton to ride tiny trams. Ooh. Emergency stop. Well, that one's got curtains, that's a bit posh. Little baby trams. We're now at Colleton where we're going to have a cream tea. What a nice day out. your reverse are doing its thing. There you go, that was our visit to Seaton Tramway. And look at the happy Glaswegians. Was that good? Extra good. And now, with great excitement, we set off across the oldest concrete structure in Britain. This was built in 1877, I think it was. Uh, it's a listed ancient monument, one of the youngest um, ever. Here we go. Scheduled ancient mon monument. Axmouth Old Bridge opened 1877 and closed to traffic only in 1990. And uh, now it's just a pedestrian bridge uh, over the pretty little harbour here at Seaton. What a lovely part of the world. But. Um, I think we should probably get back to um, the campsite. It's the final day of a um, slightly sweary event. Uh, much better night to sleep um, in the tent last night. Uh, now I'm just realising what a rural idyll it is around here. Um, yeah, walking along the road, not a lot going on, lots of bird noise. Uh, just had a very nice breakfast at a local farm shop. And um, yeah, tent packed away. That's the event over. So now all we've got to do is drive about 200 miles home in the day it is. Uh, I will say the roads here aren't in the best condition, which has made the road tests from this weekend quite entertaining. Uh, there will be several. Um, didn't manage to get a drive in the Peugeot 305 before it disappeared, which is a shame, because um, I've not driven a 305 for many years. But uh, yeah, some very interesting vehicles to come uh, as tests. Really looking forward to it. Right, I'm going to walk back to the campsite and get ready to get on my way. Well, we are now on our way home from the event of a slightly sweary name and um, I've refitted the restrictor that I took out because I was worried she was actually pinking under load uh, which makes me think perhaps she isn't um, readjusting the amount of fuel for the amount of air that was then being put through the engine um, so running too hot 
but certainly if I put my foot down now, let's do the window up. She still sounds pretty good for a tiny little 800cc flat, flat, uh, flat twin, uh, three cylinder, yeah. Uh, sorry, just joining the slip road, always an entertaining time. And um, yeah, a bit quieter perhaps, but um, I'm not convinced removing that restrictor made any difference at all to the amount of power. If anything, it may be even knocked the torque down very slightly. I don't know really. But um, overall, I'm gonna rate that modification as not worth doing in the slightest. So um, yeah, she's back on the restrictor and um, seems nice and happy. So we shall um, continue on. We've got about 160 odd miles to get back to Wales. Um, so I'm just gonna get on with it. Pouring down with rain, stuck in traffic. This is feeling very similar to the journey down to Devon. Not sure the M5 is really fit for purpose anymore. Not that the motorway is really to blame for the weather. And yes, I did put my sunglasses on. It was nice and sunny. And now he's very much not. Well, we've made it back to Wales. It's, um, we're still in South Wales at the moment. But I've just seen another Nissan Figaro. And that reminds me, there was a weekend event based in Llandrydod Wells, um, in mid Wales. Um, not a million miles away from where I live. Um, so yeah, there were Figaros from all over Europe apparently. So a very big fig meet. Uh, which is jolly good. I might not find them the best cars to drive, but um, the sight of many Figaro's together is always an amusing sight. In fact, they had a meet at the Ace Cafe in London um, a couple of months ago, I think. We got a report on that going in the um, final issue of Retro Japanese, which is on sale 14th of June, I believe, uh, which can't be too far away now. Um, not really sure, I haven't got, currently got access to a calendar, currently trying to drive around a big roundabout near Abergavenny uh, but um, yeah always nice to be back in Wales a lot of people say some very nasty things about Wales and the Welsh people all entirely unjust I have loved living in Wales and that's because of how nice Wales is and how nice Welsh people are uh, it's all good This little car is hilarious. I must conclude that, um, yeah, Myrtle's behaving much more sweetly with the um, airbox restrictor in place. So um, I think we can say that's a myth comprehensively busted. Um, removing the restrictor from the airbox of a Dayum it is will not somehow turn it into some incredible powerful machine. In fact, it'll actually make it worse. Um, Mid-range torque is definitely much better with a restrictor in place because what that Venturi is doing is not just restricting the amount of air that can go through, it's speeding up the air that does go through. So, um, which must have some sort of a benefit, a sort of mild supercharging effect. So yeah, it's not just about sheer volume, I guess. Oh, you're going to stop there. Right, okay. But his brakes, still not the best. I'm in the Brecon Beacons, so, so um, yeah, it's quite frustrating. Sunday, lots of Sunday motorists about in um, alleged sports cars bimbling along at 40 miles an hour on the national speed limit road when some of us just want to get home. And now we've got a bit of clear road after that enforced stop. And the C4 cactus is making the most of it. It's gone. So C4 cactus being chased down by a Deumatiz. It's a race like no other. But we've caught back up with a Peugeot 308 Z whatever. You know those little two-seater Peugeots? I don't even know what they're called. They just look so uninspiring. Uh, no desire to really know anything more about them. 
but I've got a double bubble roof, so they must be good. Oh, there goes the Peugeot thing. I mean, we can get a bit of a shift on now. No, the Duke is not looking ready. The Cactus is looking impatient. Unfortunately, this vlog vloggy format, I can't really give you more angles. The, the, the camera is there because it's my phone. My phone is being used as a sat-nav as well as a recording device. So, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that on the um, 2CV trip, I can have more cameras rigged up so you can see more of what's going on. But uh, today we're focused very much on simplicity, so it's one camera and you are it. Um, but yeah, not much further to go now. Uh, I think another 40 odd miles or so and we'll be back home. The main focus in the next couple of weeks is gonna be getting Foxan ready. Uh, Bromley pageant's getting close. Uh, I'm gonna have to cut a few corners now. I may not have time to paint the rear truck body. Um, so there might be a clash going on. I just don't think I'm gonna get that done. That can't be a priority. The weather is dead set against me. Um, having a canopy the wrong color will not stop her getting an MOT. Whereas, um, yeah, not having a fog light or working indicators, that's more likely to be a problem. So that has to be where the focus of my attention is. Um, but um, yeah, exciting times ahead. So stay tuned uh, um, here on Hubner and um, yeah. Let's see what happens. Almost home, probably about 10 miles to go. And there we go, about 460 miles later, we're back home. Um, so um, yeah, well done Myrtle. She's done very well on this trip. Not been quite as horrific as I expected actually. Um, bit uncomfortable, but um, I'm sure my legs will cope. Um, so I shall say, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you can see a subscribe button, perhaps you'd like to click it, um, up to you. Um, don't forget you can buy Hubnut merchandise at um, hubnut.org or support us via Patreon at patreon.com slash hubnut. Um, but yeah, Hubnut is where we have amazing adventures in terrible cars. So I shall say thank you very much for, for watching once more and farewell.